out of all the reality television that we've looked at so far on this channel, it could be argued that portions, if not whole parts, could be non-scripted. As everybody knows nowadays with reality TV, it's all scripted content and or spliced together in the editing booth to give it more of a dramatic effect. But back in the mid-2000s, when the reality TV we know today was still finding its foothold, it became a bit harder to discern what was and wasn't scripted, because everything on TV, for a good majority of that time, was as over-the-top and dramatic as what we were seeing in reality being filmed. That is, except for one show, a show that other people have talked about before, MTV's Parental Control. The mid-2000s was no stranger to MTV and Spike TV and the like with their outrageous content, but MTV always found a way to push the envelope in a way that almost felt satirical of itself in a very unironic way. <laughs> The essence of parental control boils down to this. A kid's parents don't like their partner, so the kid's parents hold an American Idol-style screening for a bunch of potential suitors for their child, and then they each pick one they like best and have them go out on a test date with their kid, and at the end of the episode, the kid chooses whether they want to stay with their current partner or break up and go with one of the people that their parents chose. Very simple concept, all things considered, in comparison to some of MTV's other dating shows that, oh, we can always talk about at a later date. But what makes parental control stand out amongst some of the other shows that were running at the time is just how scripted it is. I didn't watch the show when it was originally on air, but I find it very hard to believe that anybody actually thought any bit of this was genuine whatsoever. So I figure, why not sit down and watch an episode of Parental Control and uh, see if they could have possibly been able to pull the wool over our eyes if we weren't going into this already knowing. This is Parental Control. Oh, and before we begin, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're so close to breaking over 900 subs and possibly hitting a thousand soon. Thank you guys so much for the support and let's keep at it. And you all think I'm crazy. I've read the prophecies. I've seen the scripture. It says verbatim that we need at least 1,000 souls to delay the awakening of the great ones. So that's why I'm desperate for your help. If you want to save the world, you know what you have to do. Hi, I'm Ken and I'm a retired police officer. And I'm Rose. I'm a teacher. My daughter Danielle is amazing. She's smart, she's funny, and she is beautiful. But there's one huge problem. So, if you couldn't tell by Ken and Rose's amazing acting, all the parents are just set down in a room and given a script to read off the teleprompter for, in the most charmingly stilted way somebody's middle-aged parents could read off a script. And that's the basic setup of the episode, is they introduce the parents, they introduce their kid, in this case the daughter Danielle, and now we get to meet, oh, that little rapscallion, the boyfriend. But there's one huge problem. Oh, so she's dating Steve-O. This is the mid-2000s. Her boyfriend is a pig. <laughs> says the cop. This is Danielle. She's dating Corey. They've been together for six months, and Danielle thinks Corey is a total catch. But her parents think she needs to throw Corey back. I want to know what the directing crew for these shows tell the parents, the kids, when they're setting up establishing shots like this. Oh, just... Okay, Dad, you'll sit here. Mom, you'll sit on the other side. Danielle, you're in the middle. And now, I want you both to just sit there, act like you're consoling her, but also scolding her at the same time, and just keep shaking your head. But I want you guys to do this for about five minutes, and then we'll pick out the best three-minute clip of it and insert that into the show. We good? Gotcha. Great. All right, let's roll. If you think this is hard for Danielle, imagine how tough it will be for Court. He sits down with Danielle's parents and they watch the dates together. Just by looking at this guy, I can tell that's probably not his personality in real life. Aside from it being scripted content, he just doesn't feel comfortable acting in this way. I'm pretty confident in saying that he and the parents probably had a pretty good relationship going into the filming of this. But you know, it's going to be on MTV. It's going to be filmed. You got to get those 15 minutes of fame from being on the one crappy dating show out of MTV's other 
dozen crappy dating shows. Hi, I'm Danielle. My boyfriend's name is Corey. He's sweet, funny, and totally adorable. At this point, we've had, what, three or four introductions to Danielle? I think we need to move this along. Corey always orders Danielle around. Aw, uh, pick that up, will you? It's totally rude. Go get the car for me. Pick that up. Get me food. That's no way to treat my daughter. Again, I just want to be a fly on the wall for some of these behind the scenes. All right, Corey, you're going to sit here and you're, you're going to act all irritated and burr, you're cold because you've been sitting out on the seaside and you're going to give Danielle and say, go get the car for me. And Danielle, you're going to look so dejected and upset because obviously these aren't natural scenes. It's one thing when you have professional actors doing it. It's another thing when you're filming Joe Schmo and his girlfriend whose names you drew out of a hat from a lottery in order to put them on tape. Did they have, like, audition tapes for parental control? I know they had those for, like, other dating shows and talent shows. I would love to see the audition tapes and what that entailed for this show. Worst of all, Corey is always putting Islam into everything he's saying. Faux rizzle, it's faux shizzle. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. I'm mucho bizzle to dizzle. It's like he's speaking a foreign language. Yes. So one of the reasons you want your daughter to break up with her boyfriend is because he speaks with slang terms. There's something borderline racist about it, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Hey, Corey, Snoop Dogg called and he wants his word back. <laughs> there it is. Now it's time for mom and dad to meet the potential blind dates for Danielle. All right, well, let's get the started. I would love for that to be real. Imagine having the cockiness to walk into an audition with somebody's parents to go out with their kid and you're just like, all right, Let's get this the fuck over with. I got shit to do. I got people to bang. Like, that's just an amazing first impression. What do you do for a living? I'm a full-time student at Chapman University. What are you studying? Fashion and merchandising. Do you have a 4.0 grade average? Yeah, and fashion merchandising. What makes you think you can do this? Cater. Hill collector. I work at a fitness club. I'd say I party a little bit too much. Do you have to party? Well, yeah. A little disappointed that that is. Asking a teen or somebody in their early 20s in the mid-2000s if they party is like asking a fish if they breathe water. I call this the thinker. I'm thinking about how to give in your daughter's parents. It's gonna be thinking a long, long time. Another thing about this era of television, MTV in particular, is that it is very dreadfully horny. And not just the teens and young adults on these shows. I don't know if they'll do it in this episode, but... The parents, too. Oh my god. Some of the comments that the parents will make to some of the suitors. Woof. My daughter loves to dance. Show me what kind of dancer you are with this partner. This is right up your alley. I have a few of these at home. That doesn't surprise oh, me at all. Swing around. Do anything like hip hop? Oh, uh, I have. Can you bust a couple moves? She doesn't moves? like it. She doesn't She like took the hip hop oh, class. Well, yes, but it doesn't mean she liked it. But our daughter took the hip hop dancing class, you know? The class where the middle-aged white woman teaches young white girls how to dance in a hip-hop style so they can bust it down with their homies at the club all for real style, you know? Now that the Abercrombie & Fitch commercial is over, the parents will choose the two candidates that they both liked the best and they'll set them up on a date with Danielle. My mom's choice is first. She has a sweet heart, so I'm expecting a sweet guy. Look at the way you dress. I dress Look at the awesome. way you look. Why can't you just wear a tie once in a while? Or... <sighs> Ties are for douchebags. No, you are one. Yeah, Corey, why don't you come over to our house in a full suit and tie every day? How dare you wear a t-shirt and jeans? For shame, Corey. You know what? You shut up. Hey, if anything, you shut your mouth and you get the hell out. All right. Out. Get out. Out. Walk. Ass Sweetheart, I am sorry, but I'm not going to allow that in my house. There he is. I like the image of Corey and the new guy passing each other as Corey walks out of the house and he's just like, Hey, hey, are you for the date? Yeah. You leaving? Yeah, cool. Hey, come on in. Thanks. I paid 
it crisp because he's fun, sweet, and very cute. So you ready to get out of here? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Chris has a real edgy style. Yeah, there's nothing edgier than a guy with a flat, feathered haircut, a <laughs> button-up plaid shirt, and a plain black zip-up hoodie. All right, so I really like carnivals. So what I did is I set up this big slide for us to ride down today. Oh, that's so cool. I love rides. Ooh, whoop they do A slide. Let's go on a ride. Is... Is Corey wearing Crocs? Hold on. Ooh, whoop they do A slide. This man was ahead of the fashion curve. What is all of this? some random stuff I brought that we could try and see if it'll slide down the slide. Okay. It's some random stuff I brought, not something that the uh, MTV stage crew just brought out of a van and dumped into my hands all at once. This is the lamest date I have ever seen. You're the lamest date I've ever seen. Oh, good one, Ken. <laughs> Got him. I will kind of agree with Corey. This is, it's a fun idea as part of a date, but this should not be a full date. Unless you only have like an hour of free time in your day to go on a date, take it from me, the 100% legitimate expert in wooing people and dating. Eh. So what do you like to do in like the free time stuff? What kind of stuff are you into? I'm really into music, actually. Really into music? Do you play yeah. any instrument? Well, I'm a singer, so I guess my voice is my instrument. That's uh, I'm a, a singer. My voice is my instrument. No, it's not, Danielle. You're a singer. You're a vocalist, not an instrumentalist. You know how many girls in choir would say the exact same thing to me? Pretty cool. I'm in a band. What's it called? Wolf Bear. Nice band name. Wow. I'm in you Wolf Bear. You know what's more badass than one animal? Two. <laughs> Corey does not want to be there. He does not want to be portrayed as this type of person. How can you look at her smile? All I can stare at is her boobs. Gosh, here you go again. You know what? And your boobs don't look so bad oh, either. stop it. Don't talk hey, Corey, like that. I could kill you and nobody would ever know. You know what, Corey? I could murder you right now and nobody would know it. None of the dozens of MTV crew that are recording and editing this very episode right now, nobody would know it. I have zero admission to blame. I actually been working up an appetite this whole time. I got some food if you're hungry. Yeah, I'm starting. Yeah, Let's sounds go. good. I got us some corn dogs. Oh, oh, perfect. Oh man, babe, riding this slide has got me so hungry. You wanna uh, go sit in the bed of my truck and eat some corn dogs that have been sitting out in the hot sun for the past two hours we've been riding this slide? Are you ready to get out of here? Yeah, I'm ready. Right. Let's go. So the first date wraps up and Danielle goes back home in order to meet her second date, which is the one that her dad shows for her. So whose idea was this? Danielle's happy. Well, we wanna get rid of the trash. I'm the bomb dizzle. She loves me. <laughs> I am the bomb Dizzle. Can you please explain what Dizzle yes. is? <laughs> the way I dress is bomb Dizzle. My shoes are bomb Dizzle. Oh god, he's starting the freestyle on us. Wes, come on in. Thanks. The guy I picked was honest, sincere, and he was focused. And I think that's what Daniel wants. Is that Tori from Mythbusters? This is my lovely daughter, Danielle. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I got a good body. I take care of it. I'm well-rounded with school and everything like that. And I mean, I just really like to take your daughter out on a date. I like to think that that was the entirety of his interview process. They didn't ask him anything else. He didn't say anything else. It was just those facts. And because they were so limited to him saying that about himself in comparison to all the other random ridiculous stuff that the other candidates did, he had no choice but to go with him. Danielle, you ready to get out of here? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay. So what do you think, shizzle? You guys aren't even saying it right. If you're gonna say it, you might as well say it right. Not gonna do it. Come on, come on, come on. I'll teach you guys. No. Izzle. No. Izzle. Izzle. Come on, you gotta be a little more gangsta. Izzle. Izzle. That's better, eh? Hey? That's better. And you can teach an old dog new tricks. Is it just me, or did they actually have, like... Something going there for a second. Not like that, but they were actually, they were bonding. Okay, guys, don't misconstrue my words. So I decided to bring you to an archery range. I thought we'd shoot some bows and arrows. Oh, really? I've never done that before. That sounds really cool. That'd be pretty fun. I know a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, I brought this duffel bag that, uh, pretty sure is about the same size as you. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> 
We gotta get dressed appropriately first. <laughs> okay. So, do you hunt or something, or how did you get into this? Oh God, I feel like I'm back with my family. What are we gonna do? We're actually gonna go on a little hunting safari. A hunting safari? I, I don't hurt animals. Hey, it's okay. These animals, they won't feel a thing, I promise. Okay, let's go. All right, come on. Oh uh, no, don't worry, babe. These animals won't feel a thing. They have so much Novocaine pumping through their system right now, it's unreal. Really? Stuffed animals? There's a real man for ya. I think it would kind of be fun to go out and shoot stuffed animals with a bow and arrow. This is just something silly and goofy to go out and do with some friends or a partner. Just like her old man. Good shot. Uh, Ken, that was a stuffed animal. It's still a life form above you. <laughs> what was that glance there, Mom? What are you... What are you looking at? So, do you work out a lot? I usually go about five or six days a week. Do you have a six-pack? That's uh, decent. Can I see? Okay. Yeah, it's very nice. His belly button looks like Danielle's. Okay. Okay. We did not need that written in the script MTV. We did not need that. Dude, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so the second date wraps up, Danielle goes home again, and now it's time for that dramatic moment where she has to choose between the two suitors or staying with Corey. Now it's time for Danielle to pick the guy for her. Will she choose Chris, the boy who slid right into her heart, or Wes, the red hot hunter? Or will she stay with Corey, her boyfriend of six months, and the guy her parents can't stand? Imagine only going out for six months with somebody, and your parents hate them that vitriolically that they sign you up for an MTV dating show just to get rid of him. Like, maybe give it another few months, they're not even a year in yet, they could very organically break up on their own. Danielle, you know I love you, and I know I'm not perfect, but if you pick me, I promise I'll try to be. Part of that felt genuine, like the real Corey was fighting against the TV character to come out and actually try and put a little bit of emotion into his acting. Chris, you're such a sweet guy, but to tell you the truth, you're a little too dorky for me. Man, if Chris is too dorky, I'd hate to see how I fare. <laughs> it's kind of a good thing that Danielle eliminated me, because now I could write a song about what a cold-hearted bitch she really is. No, yeah, she's right, he's a dork. Oh, oh, the pain in my heart. Oh, I can't wait to write a song about this. So I've made my decision. <sighs> Wes. And after this episode ended, Danielle and Corey continued to date for two and a half more years before Corey finally popped the question, and now the two are happily married with three kids living in San Francisco, because that's more likely than the ending of this actually being real. And that is going to do it for this episode, folks. Be sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you want me to take a look at other TV shows like this, any other episodes of Parental Control, or any channels or YouTube videos you want me to take a look at in particular. Honestly, I had a lot of fun with this one. As always, thanks y'all for supporting and sticking around, and I hope to see you in the next one. See ya!